Um, by the way, uh, why is this guy wearing a tie? <laughs> well, it's the only place where it can be appreciated. This is an APL tie. It's got APL all over it. And you'd be the only ones that would appreciate it. I want you all to change. You've all been hearing very technical material now. I want you all to go back to the time when you didn't know APL, when you were starting to learn it, and put yourself in that position and see what, whether this material that I'm going to talk about is, uh, would have been useful or what changes you would suggest to me to make it useful. So let's get started. Yeah? Uh, the title of the book I th currently is Programming in APL, a Beginner's Guide for Dialogue APL. Why? I think there's a need for a gentle, introductory, orderly textual approach. Many of you, I think many of you still have books around and use them. Now, it's available for self-study, not at the beach, uh, not intended to be an in-depth presentation. There's a good amount of APL that I do not include. The audience, who's it aimed at? Young beginners, first-time programmers. I've tried this out for several years on, well, what we call high school kids in, uh, the states, 13-year-olds and, and 14, 15, 16-year-olds. And by God, they ex understand this. They have a little problem with things like matrices, but we talk about that. Also, well, age 13 and older, domain experts, people, people who have heard about APL and say, well, maybe it might help. What can I find out about it? And I hope this would be useful in an introductory way for that. And hey, teachers, uh, active teachers. Well, one of the ways I would like to see it happen is I'm trying to work with computer science clubs or uh, science clubs in, in high schools where to get the kids to use it. And now the teacher says, these kids are using APL. Uh, maybe I better find out. And I hope we have, uh, throughout academia, throughout the uh, academic world, uh, teachers, we need teachers to teach APL. And I'm hoping this material is an outline that might help them. This all originated for, well, COVID killed me working with kids. But, but for about six years before, I spent uh, in the summers two one-week classes, one in problem solving and one in APL, and, and uh, it worked real well. That is, I tested it out on, on some high school kids. And, well, that's what I've just said here. General approach, how did I do it? This, this is the academic procedure, I think, that works pretty well. Tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. And this is the organization of the modules that I have created. The organization, there's, there's ten, 10 modules, I don't call them chapters, and each of them may take several sessions. It depends on how long your classes are and things of that sort. And it consists of prose. And one of the things I found out very early, there's not very much prose here because students don't like much prose. They turn away from it. I once threw one of the students out because the minute I started talking, he went to his iPhone. And, and each, and I'm describing now the nature of a, pro, a module. There's illustrations. You, you, we, um, 
tell them what, what we're going to talk about in terms of the uh, verbs of the language, the functions, then there are first illustrations, and then exercises, and then an ending summary. See, I'm going to, this is what I told you. Do you know it? Then, uh, the most important part of the document are the exercises. You don't learn anything unless you're doing it. And the exercises are an essential part. I have actually a hundred and more than a hundred numbered sets of these exercises. And so uh, even if you're an APLer, you might find it fun to just to go through the exercises. But no forward re referencing when you get to a particular version. And the pattern for each of them is finger exercises. You know, type in this expression. Now, this is very important for the students because, first of all, they get the use to using the function, finding out where it is on the keyboard and uh, on the language bar. Then they're asked to then asked to create expressions. For example, one of my popular ones is John von Neumann once said the optimum lecture length is one microcentury. How many minutes is that? And so if there are any of you are bored with my talk, tell me at the end. Uh, and then that leads to creation of defunds. And between defunds and the language bar, Teaching beginners is really, really useful and, and just is great. Okay, let's look at the modules that I've created. The first module is basics, vectors. And this is taught as a language. APL is a language. And so we talk about verbs, we talk about adverbs, we introduce the high minus and and uh, things like this. Then the second module is programming. We give them the definition and discuss defunds. There, they can begin to program. And there are so many simple problems, like the von Neumann problem, uh, that you can pick up and have them write, write that. The, the, Okay, then the next one we talk about are the scalar functions. Now, th there's an important feature here that I don't think any other programming language has. May, and correct me if I'm wrong later on, but this concept of a scalar with a function applying to an array, scalar function array or array function scalar, is a unique feature that's really useful and can uh, use ver be used very well. And then we finally get talk. These are the individual modules. Then we come to matrices, and this one this one is a little more of a problem with beginners because they're not be may not have been exposed to matrices. So there's a little more comments here that the students have to endure. But it, it, they can gather that up really nicely. And well, from matrices, then you are led to, well, how do I get information in and get information out? I, I don't want the whole matrix. I just want to make a change here, things of that sort. And then, of course, that uh, leads you to array inquiry, you know, uh, index of, and and things of that sort, uh, do these two arrays m match, and things of that sort. And then finally, we, we come to arrays again and suddenly tell them, you know what? Every item in this matrix we've been, or vector we've been using uh, could be another array. And of course, that opens up on all, all sorts of interesting functions uh, that you have available. Incidentally, early on in the basics, we just ver work with vectors, and you can do an awful lot with just the vector. Now, I've, I've put together and repeatedly, and some of them are re 
repeated, but I put together mathematical facilities more, more likely for my personal use because I want to get to the, to the universities and particularly the math department uh, and in there particularly the linear algebra people because APL fits so nicely with the linear algebra material. And so I've grouped together lots of all the stuff that's mathematically oriented. You know, okay. And from there, finally, I introduce operators. Now, I do not introduce all of the operators. I introduce axis specification. The axis specification is an operator. And we run it through all of the, uh, well, I expose it to all of the functions that, have, that use it. And then the reduction, backslash, and uh, forward slash, inner, uh, outer product, inner product, and each. Those are the only ones I introduce. And I would be very interested in knowing which other ones that you find useful in your work. I was running out of time writing. Gotcha. Mine says five minutes and 25 seconds. Uh, OK. Well, the next thing, we return to programming. Traditional programming, that's got to be exposed, because I understand a lot of you people are still using traditional programming. And then that also includes quad and quad code and all of the vast control constructs that, that, that exist in there. But when I first programming, we only had one, con one branching construct. It said, go to or continue on or go to some other location. And it worked fine. Th that ends about 75% of the text. Uh, I, I also ended with conc a conclusion of listing all of the things that need to be learned later on. And most of those could be in LTDs. Now, uh, I've just described to you about 75% of the document. Because when I generally have finished classes, the students will often say, well, that's nice. What can I do with it? Well, now, remember, this is a language. When, you've learned, when you have learned another language, when you have learned the grammar and, and a bit of the vocabulary, what, what happens? Do you start writing great essays in the language? No. You, you, at best, start reading material. So that's, let's see which button, that, the last quarter of the book is concerned with reading. Reading, and what, what did I do? Uh, oh, I started out with Shirley, and then I added 20 examples. And now the examples are given in terms of uh, a statement of a problem, such things as uh, how did the House of Representatives get seating in the House of Representatives in the United States Senate uh, government uh, get every 10 years after we have a new census? Uh, things like, uh, what else, what did I say? Lewis Carroll, by the way, um, had, has a publication called Pillow Problems. Apparently, he didn't go to sleep very early, uh, very easily. And he's listed several problems. I picked up some of those. I've tried to make them kind of interesting problems. The FBI has changed their uh, uh, some checking and, and problems like this. And they're, 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 they're um, set up as problems with solutions, and by the way, any of you, as you look at those, open game for better solutions, or certainly different solutions, because I've, I've, tried, I've tried several of them, and, and uh, I would like very more, more, many more. And if you have interesting problems that can be stated and, and uh, education, used educationally, I'd love to hear them. So that's me. One minute and 40 seconds. Any, <laughs> any questions? It's a new textbook. 
Programming in APL, a beginner's guide by me. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome.